Hey everyone, welcome back. Before I get into these stories, I just wanted to say, you know, it's October now, and usually I don't do any kind of paranormal stories, but I feel like because it's October, and it's the spooky month, I feel like if I want to do some paranormal ghost stories, it should be okay. I say this because I get complaints sometimes when someone will complain about just one paranormal story or one paranormal video that I do like once a year on my channel. So here's the thing. I don't want to sound like an asshole, but this is my channel. And if I want to do some ghost stories or if I want to do a video on any topic, that's okay because this is my channel. For all of those who aren't entitled and enjoy everything that I post, thank you and I appreciate you. All that being said, there's only one paranormal story in this video, but I'm not going to tell you which one. So anyways, if you're all ready, let's get into the stories. And remember, to always stay hungry. I'm a female, and I was 24 at the time of this incident. I had just started a new job as a general manager of a spa that was about a 30 minute drive from my house. We were open until about 9 p.m. and were always short staffed for the front desk, so I was closing this night. I began my drive home a few minutes after 9 p.m. My work and home were both in busy suburbs and the drive was on the turnpike basically the entire route. So anyway, I was about halfway into my commute when I came up behind a pickup truck driving slow in the left lane. There were no other cars around, so I suppose I should have just gone around him, but the left lane is for passing. He didn't go to the right lane to let me pass, so I flicked my high beams once at him to get his attention. Usually people would see this and just move over. No big deal. He didn't move though, so I just went around him on the right side and continued on my way. A few minutes later, I see someone speeding up behind me. Now, I'm in the right lane, so I assume this person will just pass me on the left, as they should. Nope. They start tailgating me so close that I can't even see their headlights in my rearview mirror. I was going 80 miles per hour, and they were two inches away from my bumper. It was the same pickup truck from earlier. I was driving a small Prius, mind you, so if they hit me at this speed, I was afraid I'd be killed. I decided to try and go to the left lane to see if maybe they would just drive past me. Of course not. They went in the left lane right behind me. This went on for a while, until my exit was then coming up. I thought I would lose them, but I got my phone out just in case they decided to follow me. As my exit came up, I had to slow down slightly as to not lose control on the ramp, but this asshole just kept following me. This is a big exit, so there are two lanes on the ramp, and this psycho actually got in the left lane next to me and started turning the truck as if to try to run me off the road or make me hit him. At this point, I had looked over as we were directly next to each other, and I told myself to try and take in every detail that I could. It was dark out and I was really trying to not crash my car, so it was difficult. But I was able to see a 40-something-year-old white man with brown hair and a baseball bat. Great. Not very unique. I yelled out to him, Hey, what the fuck is your problem? And I then hit the gas to get ahead of him again. I went 80 miles per hour through the easy pass, and he followed me right through it, about two inches away from my bumper again. Great, I thought. At least they'll have a picture of his license plate, and it'll show how close he was to me and our speed. As I came up to the ramp to get onto the main road, he fucking tried to run me off again. He got next to me and even slightly in front of me at one point, so I was able to see that he was driving a black Ford F-150, and the back window was covered in duct tape. I even got half of the license plate. I'm honestly not sure if he wanted to run me off the road or to get me to stop my car, but there was no way in fuck I was letting that happen. I was a young woman alone in the dark, and I'm sure he had a gun. 
I called my dad and I told him I was coming to his house instead of going home and that I needed him to be standing out in front with his assault rifle. I was that fucking terrified. He told me to just drive straight to the police station and that if the guy follows me into the parking lot to just lay on the horn. So that's what I did. I drove to the police station which was only about five minutes straight down the main road. I lost the man somewhere along the way. When I got to the station, I then explained what happened. The cop seemed like he couldn't be bothered. He told me I had to call the state trooper since it happened on the highway. He dialed and then handed me the phone. I was shaking and I could barely put together a sentence at this point, so I'm not sure how well I explained what just went down. Well, the first state trooper I spoke to hung up on me. Yeah, they really fucking hung up. I asked the officer to please dial again for me because they hung up. The second person I spoke with asked me which exit we got off on, then they told me I had to go through the corresponding police station. I just felt like everyone was passing me off to someone else and no one wanted to help me. I told the state troopers that the man had chased me at 80 miles per hour through the easy pass, so they have that on camera, but he just didn't care. When I got off the phone, I told the officer what they had said and all he did was give me the address of the other station. Do you think they offered to even walk me out front to my car? Nope, of course not. Shaking still, I walked out to my car looking for the pickup truck. I had to drive 10 minutes to the other police station all by myself, terrified this pickup truck was still following me from a distance. Well, if you thought the first station was bad, just wait. I told the person at the desk what was going on and how I'd been passed around twice now. They told me to take a seat and that they would send an officer out to file a report for me. A young officer who looked to be about the same age as me then came out. He seemed annoyed before I even said anything. I told him what had just happened and he actually was rolling his eyes as I told him. He said it was just road rage and nothing more. I said that the guy tried to kill me. I mean, he was actually trying to run me off the road twice, and he followed me an inch from my bumper through the easy pass at 80 miles per hour. No joke, the officer laughed at me. He actually fucking laughed and in a sarcastic tone told me to just go home and call them if I ever see him again. I just said back, fine, and I guess I'll be buying a gun tomorrow since you've all been completely useless. He just said back, well, that's your right, go for it and then went right back to his office. What the fuck? What's going on here? Once again, I had to walk out to a dark parking lot alone. I drove home absolutely paranoid that this man was still watching me somehow and would find out where I lived. I then got into bed where my husband was already asleep and just cried until I fell asleep. I didn't even tell him until the next day. So the next day my husband had to go to work before I woke up. I was allowed to go to work at any time since I would be in my office all day. I woke up and I went to my husband's work to tell him the whole story. Of course, he was pretty upset about how it was handled, but he tried to calm me down by saying that it sounded like to him that the guy thought I was someone else, or that maybe he was just drunk, and he really doubted I'd ever see him again. Side note. My then husband and I are no longer together, but he was not a fighter. The man I'm with now would have handled this completely differently. I would have called him immediately while it was happening, and he actually would have come to meet us, and he would have killed this guy. But anyways, after trying to calm down and tell myself my husband was probably right, that it was just a crazy thing that'll never happen again, I started driving to work at about 11 a.m., 25 minutes go by, and I'm almost coming to my exit, when what the fuck do I see? Yep, that's right. The black Ford F-150 with the duct taped back window. He was behind me, but then got in the lane next to me. I called 911 and started screaming into the phone. A man tried to run me off Route 611 last night, and I was actually laughed by the police. They told me to call if I ever saw them again. Well, he's fucking following me again now, and he's going to kill me. The dispatcher was so nice and helpful with me. She asked for the closest mile marker, 
and she said she was sending units out to me immediately. The man pulled out in front of me when he saw I was on the phone, and actually seemed like he was trying to get away. Hell no. He actually got off at the exit that I needed to get to work. Did this guy follow me home last night? I mean, what are the chances he would be on the highway next to me the next day in the late morning going to the same town as me? I was trying to make sure he didn't get away. I followed him and watched as he cut off several cars trying to get away from me. People were actually honking at him for driving like a maniac. I'm honestly shocked that he didn't cause a car accident. I stayed on the phone with the operator until I followed him down a street and saw several flashing lights from the police. They pulled him over, and another officer came to my car, leading me down a separate street. The officer who came to me was actually the chief of police. He was the only officer who was nice to me throughout all of this. He asked what happened, and I told him what happened the night before. I told him about how no one would help me, and he seemed genuinely disappointed. He told me that he had daughters himself, and how he would really hope someone would take them seriously and help them if they were ever in a situation like this. He asked how I knew this truck was the same man, and I told him how I saw the duct tape window and the man with the baseball hat driving. I had also remembered the first part of the license plate and the make and model of the truck. The chief was able to pull up the report that I had filed the night before and told me the young officer who took it had just put in his notice to quit, so he probably just didn't feel like doing his job that night. What the fuck? He told me the man in the truck was in cuffs now, and I would most likely never see him again. They knew him well in this township, and he had a lengthy and violent record. Apparently, he lived here, so we didn't know what he was doing 30 minutes away in town the night before or where he stayed to be able to follow me back but the chief of police actually told me I was very lucky to have gotten away from him and that they were able to arrest him. Thank God. I'm so grateful to the chief of police and that the whole department wasn't messing around and actually did their job. It's been eight years now since this happened. I quit that job for unrelated reasons that year, but I haven't seen that psycho since, and I hope it stays that way. I'm a 24-year-old female from Scotland. I have relatives who live way up in the Highlands, and I live in the Central Belt area. Anyone familiar with the Scottish Highlands know that there are some roads that are extremely secluded up there. I'm talking no streetlights, complete seclusion to the point that you can drive very fast so long as you know what you're doing because you'll have no other cars for hours. Maybe you'll see a secluded farmhouse every once in a while. It can be mountainous, and you can lose signal at certain parts unless you're within a certain UK network who somehow provides signal even in the most secluded areas. You'll be surrounded by trees and nature. You get the idea. My cousin's birthday is in late September, and it's pitch black outside by about 8pm here at this time of the year. Although they aren't immediate family, we're close enough that I'll go up there to celebrate with them. The story happened to me last year, so as my cousin's birthday approaches, this has been on my mind more and more. The journey back home took me about four and a half hours. Like I said, these relatives lived far up there, and they were in a secluded village. Despite the long journey, I really enjoyed it. I'd listen to music and sing my heart out as I drove, or think about things going on in my life. So I set off for home after we ate dinner, and I texted two friends and my parents to let them know I was on my way back. The drive didn't scare me, but I texted them just in case. The journey started off as normal, and by the time I was almost three and a half hours in, it was already very dark. The lack of streetlights on this particular stretch of road was spooky, but I was used to it. This time though, I noticed there was a car up ahead and a woman who seemed to be having trouble. She was kneeling down, and although it might sound stupid, I felt the need to stop and at least check if she was alright. As a woman myself, it just felt like the right thing to do. I signaled to her before stopping, and I rolled my window down before calling out and asking if she was okay. 
In my country, we have our driver's side on the right and the passenger seat to the left, and it was my passenger window that I rolled down. The lady looked about mid to late 30s, and she had dark hair and light eyes. She was dressed normally, and I didn't really get any weird vibes. Looking back, I think she might have put on a show about being relieved to see me, but at the time, nothing seemed exaggerated. She exhaled really loudly and put her arm to her forehead, then tilting her head back, then grinning at me. She told me she was on her way back to Edinburgh from a wedding way up north, which seemed odd to me due to how she was dressed. She didn't look fancy at all. In fact, she had jeans and a hoodie on. Not exactly wedding attire, but normal enough outside of that. I raised an eyebrow, and I told her where I was headed, which may sound dumb, but I was vague about it. Telling her the city, but not exactly where I resided within it. She went on to say that she had broke down for about 20 minutes with no cell service, and that she was scared. But then now that I was here, she wasn't so scared anymore. Now, I'm familiar with this particular road, and the signal here isn't bad at all no matter what network provider you're with. I made a mental note of it, but again, I didn't think too much of it. I told her I could call someone to help, but she started insisting that I help her instead. That was when I realized that something was odd here. I had a perfectly fine signal, so why not call someone? I told her I couldn't be much help and that she'd be better off calling for roadside assistance. When I said this again, she seemed to grow agitated, her tone changing to sound not exactly threatening but definitely a little panicked and aggressive, and certainly no longer warm and friendly. She told me that it would take too long and that she was scared of the dark, and would I please just get out of the car and help her. I felt bad, but something was just beginning to feel off. I again told her that I'm no engineer and that if she broke down, I really couldn't do much but call someone to help her. I even offered her a lift to a populated area so she could wait in, or to a hotel or something. I didn't want to just leave a woman stranded in the dark on a secluded road, still miles from real civilization. However, as I went back and forth with the woman, I noticed a dim light spark from the back of her car. It looked like a phone light, and now the red flags were now burning red in my head. The woman knew that I noticed, and quickly turned around and slapped the window. Jesus, don't fucking scare her like that! She shouted at someone, before turning to me and then smiling again. Then saying, Oh, that's just my boyfriend. He was having a nap and must have gotten on his phone. All I could think was, if these two people were really stranded in the dark... Why the hell would the boyfriend go to sleep? Wouldn't he be awake brainstorming with his girlfriend, trying to rectify the situation? Why hadn't she mentioned that he was there? Why was she so adamant for me to get out of the car? Why didn't she want me to call for help? What did she mean by don't scare her? The alarm bells were now blaring in my mind, and I floored it out of there immediately. I didn't even say anything. I just booked it the hell out of there. I put my window up again and sped along the road, now terrified. I didn't stop driving until I was out of the secluded dark roads, and then on the more populated ones. And as soon as I got home, I called one of my friends and told her everything. She agreed that it was super creepy, and that I did the right thing getting out of there. To this day, I wonder what that couple's deal was, and I have a really bad feeling about it. I think that something was definitely off about the whole situation, and I'm just glad I listened to my instincts and got out of there before it was too late. I learned a huge lesson that day. It's okay to attempt to help someone, but you should always be safe and cautious when doing so, and if they refuse your help or you get a bad vibe, get out of there straight away. I'm so glad nothing awful happened, but it still bothers me to this day. I'm glad I felt comfortable driving fast, because if I didn't, they could have easily followed me. I really hope that if they were actually stranded, they got home safely, but something tells me they were up to something. 
I really do hope that they never actually lured anyone out of their car that night. Or ever. The story happened to my mom's friend. I'm just going to call him uncle, and he gave me permission to share the story on the internet. This happened during the winter of 2013 in China on Chinese New Year's Eve. He was driving back from work in his hometown in another province in the middle of the night. The highway was completely empty since everyone was already enjoying their dinner, as well as family time rather than still on the road trying to get home. Uncle was extremely tired from work, and he had to drive for 10 hours on the cold winter night, so he was stressed as you can imagine. The drive was rough, until he discovered a side mountain road that could save him hours of driving, so he took it. A big mistake. For those who have ever traveled to China or are Chinese, they'll know how dangerous some mountain roads can be, and especially in the dark with snow falling and on the edge of a cliff. You could die if your car slips even a tiny bit. I think he was crazy when he told us the story. Anyway, he took a shortcut, then started noticing something right outside his driver's side back window. A man following his car. He was so confused since the car was in drive, and how this old man was able to catch up to it. Even though he drove slowly but still fast enough for normal people trying to match the speed not to mention this old man. Then he made another big mistake. He stopped and parked his car, got out of the car, trying to see what the fuck was going on and who the fuck the man was. No one. He saw no one. He circled his entire car but couldn't find anything. Not even footprints on the ground. He thought he must be seeing things, so he shook it off and got back in the car. After he got back in the car and started driving, he looked in the rearview mirror, and guess what? The old man was now sitting in the back seat of his car, then he blacked out. Now he didn't physically black out, but he said that he had just lost his memories for a period of time, and he couldn't remember how he drove for the rest of that night. When he regained his consciousness, he was on his way out of the mountain, seeing the sunrise shining on his face and the old man now gone. Uncle said he had no clue how he was even alive after losing consciousness, but by some miracle, he made it out alive. He went home and then finally had a hot meal. He told his mom what had happened, and his mom jokingly asked what the ghost man looked like. Then my uncle described him, his facial structure, his clothing, and his mom stopped talking and looked really shocked. She then ran into her room and found an old photograph, then showed it to my uncle. Is that him? My uncle was surprised to see the ghost man that he saw in his car in the photo. It was indeed the same man in the photo, the same facial structure, and the same clothes. His mom started crying and told uncle it was her dad, his grandpa who had passed away before he was even born. He had never seen him or his photo in the house before since it was such a sad reminder for her. She thinks that the grandpa was there to protect him from the dangerous snowy night drive in the mountains. That grandpa knew uncle was in danger, so he came down from heaven to watch over him, and that's why he made it through to dawn. Uncle said he doesn't believe in ghosts because he's a surgeon and he's seen way too many deaths daily, but that after that happening, He's really not sure anymore. Hey everyone, I hope you all enjoyed these stories. If you ever want to submit your own, you can do so at southerncannibal.com. Have a good night everyone. And remember, to always...